Hi guys, uh, this is Amazing Toying. We're in um, Unit uh, 2, Model 3. Right, this is where we're at. Unit 2, Model 3. So, um, so if you've been following this series, we've, uh, uh, we've discussed investor psychology, locating properties, and now we have property analysis. Um, so I'm going to imagine that you now, you know, you have a, you located a property, right? And you want to analyze it, right? Most of the time when, when the seller calls me on one of my ads, or if I call a seller on the ad, I usually do my own property analysis before I even go to see the property because, you know, you don't want to drive all the way there only to find out you can't even buy the property. So you do some of these uh, property analysis on the phone um, before you get to the seller's house, right? Before you go to see it or make an appointment. So we're gonna put it here, uh, property analysis model three. So model three. So we're still in unit two. So we'll call it a property analysis. Okay, so there's a saying in this business that you make your money when you buy and you take your profit when you sell, right? You know, um, it's a little bit different than most businesses, you know, because uh, uh, most people's businesses, you know, they buy the property, they mark it up, um, you know, and, and it's also different in, in, in most investments, right? In the stock market, when you buy, buy a stock, you're hoping that the stock, the, the stock will go up, right? Well, if you buy today and the stock start going down, or either you sell, you get out, or if you're not careful, the stock can go to zero, right? And that's the difference between investing in the stock market and investing in, in, the real, in real estate. Because real estate can never go to zero. Even if the market went down, the worst that will happen is that you rent the property, either to break even, or at least to recover some of your money, and then you make up the difference. So, uh, you know, what does property analysis consist of? Well, most of the time, okay, in its simplest form, okay, you're trying to determine the value of the property you're buying, okay? And in residential real estate, value is very, very simple. I mean, um, you know, even though you have appraisal, you have inspections, and you have all that, okay? The simplest way to determine the value of your property is just to look at what's sold in the neighborhood. So if you're in, uh, let's say you're on Main Street, any town, USA, right? And you locate a property. And inside that street, on that street, right, there are properties that might have sold in the last six months, in the last one year. Um, usually when they do appraisals for lenders, the lenders used to keep within 90 days of what's sold, right? All the loans that are used for real estate are based on appraisals of what recently sold, right? Uh, you know, which is the uh, trend. That's how lenders determine how much they should finance on a property. You know, like, I mean, the price really is in the eye of the beholder. Um, what somebody will offer for, for a property depends on how much need they have for the property. You know, I could come to any town USA and overpay for a property if I'm not an investor, you know. So let's say the, the market in any town USA on that street is $100,000. Okay. I show up, uh, you know, I got too much money in my pocket. I saw this nice property. Uh, And because I got so much money in my pocket, I can come in and upset the value of this area, right? 
because I could say, oh, this property has a, a nice, you know, structure and, and, and the owner that doesn't really want to sell, okay, put the property up to see some fool or what fool will show up and overpay for his property. And so I show up, I got too much money in my pocket and I offer 120,000 for this property, right? Well, even though the streets is selling for 100,000, I just upset the, 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 the value in the area. So I just took the value up, okay? And sometimes I even do that myself. If I have a property, like I have two or three properties in an area, um, I can upset the value in that area by just selling one of the properties at a higher price to one of my corporations just to take the value up. And that happens all the time. And so that's why you have to be careful when you analyze the property to see who is upsetting the value in the area, right? So for example, uh, let's say there was another property that is a little bit crummy, right? Uh, this property is, is a crummy property. Okay, it's got roof leaks all over the place and it's in foreclosure, right? And the owner recently abandoned the property. Bank finally took the property. Bank now says this property is so jacked up there's not much, we better try to recover our money, even though they owe us 70,000, we're just gonna let it go for 50K, right? So we'll call this one of these abandoned properties, right? Abandoned and vacant. So the bank let it go, this is a bank foreclosure, okay? Um, bank let it go for 50,000, well they just brought the value back. To about fifty thousand dollars in the area. So when the appraiser comes in, the appraiser tries to adjust for all those uh, all these numbers, right? Based on the square footage, the land value, the age of the house, um, those kind of uh, 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 criteria are used in determining value as far as appraiser is concerned. You as an investor, right? You take all that into consideration. You run a comp. A comp. It's a short for comparison, right? So in other words, how does the properties in this area compare one to each other and how much are they selling for on average based on, on their square footage? Okay, so that's the psychology right there. That's how you basically overall uh, look at value, right? I think, uh, let me see in this uh, schedule, um, Okay, so in, in Model 5, we're gonna talk about the, the understanding the math, right? So, so that's, that's really, you know, part of the property analysis, okay? The other part of this is uh, what I call the profile. Uh, profile, right, profile. Profile of a property, it's like the credit report, right? So that the profile tells you that, okay, this property was bought by somebody at a particular time and they put some kind of loan on it, right? So a profile will usually tell you uh, the name of the owner, okay, the property address, uh, um, um, bedrooms, bathrooms, everything that is recorded in the county in terms of the property structure, right? Bedroom, bathrooms, or the year, the year of birth, or the day of the year they built it, um, the, the APN number, which is the assessor's parcel number. So you want to know all this. It's part of your analysis of the property to see if you, even if you're going to go see it. For example, you pull it up and you find out it's only one bedroom. Well, if you're not buying one bedroom, there's no point in going to see the property. The profile will tell you that when the owner, you know, Okay, you might have called the owner and the owner says, well, uh, it's a two bedroom. Well, you pull up the profile and it says one bedroom on the county recorder's paperwork. Well, either you'll be asking the owner, well, it says one bedroom here. You just told me it's two bedrooms or three bedroom. How did that happen? Oh, well, you know, we added some two bedrooms about two, three years ago. So you want to be sure, well, did you get a permit for that? If they didn't get a permit, when you go to sell the property, if you bought it, when you go to sell it, the lender is going to ask you the same question. Because title report is going to show that this is a one bedroom and now you're trying to flip it as a three bedroom. The lender is going to ask you, where's your permit? 
to do the addition. And if you don't have a permit to do the addition, the lender is probably not going to finance it, right? And so a lot of these are not even taught in, in, you know, in all these you know, seminars and, and webinars sometimes because they focus on, on the money, you know, the money part of it. Or you buy property for 50 and sell it for 100 and you make a ton of money. Yeah, you do make a ton of money, but beneath, beneath that money-making process, if you don't do your homework, you will lose money. It's as simple as that. So, so between the profile, right, uh, the appraisals, um, the, the location of the property, uh, the people selling it, uh, the price, you know, that's how you analyze what you should offer for the property. Okay, and so when we get to module five, you know, I'll show you the map, okay, that now go, uh, goes behind this, okay? Because once you analyze this, you, find, you, you confirm and you verify, right? You trust but verify, right? You verify a lot of this, then you could now sit down and analyze your numbers, okay? And then we'll go to that in a minute, which is module four. Now we're gonna go to module, uh, I mean, uh, module five. Now we're going to model four, okay? Now, let me say this real quickly, because if you're watching this and um, you're not a subscriber to these models, right? You could click below or send me an email, you know, amazingtoying.com forward slash pick your, or pick my brain, or just send it to amazingtoying at gmail.com. Um, or if somebody sent you this, you know, same thing, just go to amazingtoying.com and you'll be able to subscribe uh, to this series of um, uh, instructions, right? Now, the main purpose of this instruction is to give you an overall view, right? You still have to get in the trenches. And it's when you get in the trenches that you actually, uh, you're able to do this, right? So I just want to mention that before we go to uh, model four, all right?